Hi everybody, it's Matt from Tech Minute. Today we're going to be assembling the WHDTS RGB LED flashing Christmas tree. This one is pretty cool since the LEDs flash in various colors. It's a neat little soldering project, so let's get started. So here's all the parts that come in the kit. Uh, I kind of just laid them all out here. So you need about 36 of these uh, RGB LEDs. Actually, they give you about um, 40 of them. So I include the rest on the bottom here. There are six micro, uh, four, 47 microfarite uh, capacitors here. There are six S9901 four transistors here. There are eight hundred ohm uh, resistors and seven uh, 4.7 ohm uh, resistors, although we only need six of these, so we get a spare out of that. There's the micro USB uh, port that's going to get mounted onto the board here to charge it. The switch, the USB power cable, um, these little mounters here so that you can mount the the board to a battery pack, I believe. Let me go on there. And that's about it, and then you got the boards here. Hey everybody, so here's the parts again here. I just wanted to show how you can identify the two types of resistors here, because this is usually the first component you start with. And it's hard to say, okay, well, which one is the 100 ohm one, which one's the 4.7. So as you can see here, I have labeled the 4.7 and the 100, but I just want to show you quick here how you identify them. Um, the 100 ohm resistor has these little color-coded bands on them. And actually, let's flip them around like this. Yeah. So you have to read them by the color. So typically, the 100 ohm one is a brown, three blacks, brown, three blacks, and then a uh, red at the end. And then the 4.7 ohm one is typically has a gold band on the front, brown, a black, a brown, and a brown. Now, when you plug that in, if you were to look this up, it says 4.1, although they see 4.7. I, I, I plugged it in the resistor calculator, it says it's actually 4.7. Uh, I have a good resistor calculator site that's actually on DigiKey, so I'll send that in the link notes there and it'll help you guys identify these. Just makes it easier in my opinion. Hi everybody, so here's some of the tools you're going to need for the project. Um, these mini pliers here that are kind of uh, ta tapered on the end. These are really nice for when you're clipping the backs of the leads off to make them shorter. I recommend getting some of these, although you can use regular pliers as well too. I have these I used to use as well, which are more for you know heavy duty electrical, but they'll do the job. They just can't get in the tight spaces like these smaller ones can. Or even if you got like regular you know needle nose pliers with the little clip in the middle here, you could stick them in here and do it. But these are these are best if you're willing to you know get them. I'll put links in the notes of where to get those from. Uh, some lead free 60 40. Uh, tin solder, a solder sucker just in case you need to redo any of the uh, components, uh, soldering station as you can see here, variable speed, um, helping hands, if you have a helping hand station something like this here, really useful to have although you can just have just the helping hands piece just so it holds the circuit board it makes it a lot easier to mount it and uh, one thing I do have is my fume hood here too, to suck up all the fumes when we're soldering. It's optional, although I highly recommend it once if you start getting into a lot of soldering, it's nice to have those fumes get away from you. First we're going to start with the 100 ohm resistors and install them into sections R2, R4, R6 and R7 into board A. Take one of the resistors and we're going to bend the ends so they resemble little feet. Then we are going to put them through the hole in R2. These can go any way since there is no polarity and just make sure it sits flush to the board.
So my little helper here is going to do resistor number four. Since he's only four, I think it's the perfect resistor for him to do, and he's doing a great job at placing it on the board. So now we will put in resistors R6 and R7, and this will complete the placement of the 100 ohm resistors for board A. Now we are going to place the three 4.7 ohm resistors on R1, R3, and R5. So now we're going to flip the board over and solder all of the points where you see the resistor legs hanging out. Try to hold the tip of the soldering iron beside the leg and the solder pad so that it will heat evenly. Apply a small amount of solder and when the hole is filled you are done. So now we're going to take our clippers here and clip these legs off. Just stick it under the leg and clip and it'll take it right off. Now we are going to be placing the LEDs. There are two sides to LEDs, a positive side and a negative side. The positive side is the one with the longer leg and goes in the plus side of the board. We are going to be placing LEDs on D1 to D18 and also leave a little bit of the LED sticking out from the board since we will need to bend it 90 degrees.
that we have placed the LEDs on the circuit board, we are going to flip over the board and solder in the LED leads. Make sure you tin the soldering iron first by applying a little bit of solder to the end. Then we're going to apply heat to each of the LED leads and apply the solder. You'll have to repeat this process until all the LEDs are soldered on. As you can see here, I put too much solder and caused the short. Remember that solder sucker tool I mentioned previously? Well, we're going to use it here to suck up the excess solder and fix the issue. Now we are going to clip off the excess leads from the LEDs and clean up the board a bit. Oops, looks like I forgot to solder in one of the LEDs. It's always good to double check everything to make sure nothing gets missed. So I'll just go back and solder in that missed LED. Looks like I found another LED that wasn't soldered in. I'll just go ahead and fix that up. Next up we are going to do the capacitors C1, C2, and C3. The negative side will have the white line going down on it and the positive side won't. Make sure you line up the positive side and the negative side correctly on the board. You are going to want to leave a little bit of capacitor leg above the board as it will need to bend 90 degrees and it won't sit flush on the circuit board. This will allow us more room in the future to join up the two circuit boards together. Next we are going to flip over the board and solder together the three capacitors we just placed on the board. After you're done soldering, clip off the legs of the capacitors. Next we are going to insert the transistors into Q1, Q2, and Q3 on the board. You're going to want to line up the flat side of the transistor to the flat side shown on the board and insert all three legs into the three holes on the board. You might also have to bend the legs slightly in order to allow them to fit on the board.
Now we are going to solder the three transistors to the board and clip the legs of the transistors on. Bend the transistor located in Q2 over 90 degrees so it will allow us to fit the other circuit board between them. I ended up bending over all of the transistors in the end. Now we are going to repeat the process again for board number 2 or B as it's listed. We are going to place three 100 ohm resistors in R2, R4 and R6. Now we are going to flip the board over and solder the resistors to the board and then clip off the excess legs after we are done soldering. Now we are going to place the three 4.7 ohm resistors on the board at locations R1, R3, and R5. Then we will flip over the board and solder them in and then clip the excess legs afterwards. Now we are going to place the 18 LEDs on the board in positions D1 to D18. Make sure you leave a bit of length for the LEDs to stick out so we are able to bend them 90 degrees. Also note that the positive leg of the LED is the longest one. Now we are going to flip the board over, solder all the LEDs to the board, and clip the legs off, just like we did to the first board.
Now we are going to place the three capacitors in position C1, C2, and C3 on the board. The positive leg is the longer one and will go on the positive side or plus sign on the board. Again, make sure to leave a little bit of space between the capacitor and the board so that we can bend it 90 degrees. Then we will flip the board over, solder on the remaining legs, and afterwards clip the legs off. Now we are going to place the three transistors in positions Q1, Q2, and Q3. Make sure to align the flat side of the transistor to the flat side shown on the board. Make sure to leave a little bit of space between the transistor and the board as we will have to bend them 90 degrees. Then we will flip the board over, solder the transistors, and clip the legs off. Now we are going to place board B into board A. There is a slit in the middle where board B will slide into board A. Make sure both boards line up in the middle where the small square solder pads as we will be soldering these two boards together next in order to make them more sturdy. Now we are going to solder together board B to board A. We will solder each of the square soldering pads located in the middle of the boards together. There are two spots that will need to be soldered on each of the boards. Be careful to not let the soldering iron touch any of the other components as it will damage them. Now we are going to solder the mini USB power adapter to the square base circuit board. This one can be a bit tricky to solder due to the five smaller power pins. I started soldering the two large rectangular mounts so it would hold the USB port in place. Then I proceeded to solder in the five smaller power pins. You don't need much solder and just be sure to check for any solder crossing between the pads. If this does happen, heat up the solder and use a solder sucker to remove the excess solder.
Now we're going to place the power switch into S1. Make sure the switch goes through all the holes and sits flush with the board. Next we are going to solder the power switch to the board. Flip the board over and start with soldering the two larger diagonal pins. Since these are a bit larger, they will require a bit more heat in order for the solder to flow. Next proceed to solder the six smaller pins using a small amount of solder. Now we are going to place the tree board to the square base board. Make sure you align the two positive sides to the correct semicircle in the board and this will also align the negative side as well. Now we are going to solder the tree boards to the square baseboard. There are eight points where we will have to solder to the board. This was a little tricky to not only hold the tree to the base, but also to get into the tight spaces with the soldering iron. I found I had to place the square board in the helping hands at a bit of an angle in order to get the first solder joint done. The rest were just a matter of angling the board so that I could get the soldering iron in the space and solder the joint. Now we are going to solder the last LED to the top of the Christmas tree. Place the LED in the last two holes at the top, bend the LED 90 degrees upward and solder the legs in and clip off the excess legs when you are finished. Now we are going to attach the feet to the bottom of the square circuit board. Place the threaded end through the four holes at the outside of the board and use the nut to secure the feet to the board. Let's see if this works. Plug the small end of the USB into the base of the tree and the larger end into the cell phone charger, power pack or USB port on the computer. Click the red button and let's see what happens. 
Awesome, it works! If you like this video, please leave some comments below, click like and subscribe, and thanks for watching Tech Minute.